Hi, I'm Indy Nidell, and this is another exciting episode of Out of the Trenches, where I sit here in the Chair of Wisdom and answer your questions about the First World War. Okay, let's get going. Chidu... Chidu mebi nyoku brown. Chidu mebi nyoku brown writes... Sorry for mangling your name. Uh, did the revolts in the newly formed nation of Nigeria, after the amalgamation by Frederick Lugard, uh, during the war harm the Cameroon and Togoland campaigns in any way for the British? Not that I'm aware of. Um, for those of you who don't know, Nigeria fell under British control in 1900 and 1901, but formally became a colony and a protectorate in 1914. There were British forces that used Nigeria as a base in the Cameroon campaign. And in 1915, the Germans even launched an offensive from Cameroon into Nigeria, which was unsuccessful after the two battles of Gurin. I think that's how you pronounce Gurin. It might be Gurin, okay. Um, oh yeah, Togoland. Uh, British and French troops invaded the German colony of Togoland August 7th, 1914. They were unopposed, since there was no real military there. There was a powerful radio transmitter there, but the German radio guys destroyed it before it fell into Allied hands. So, uh, there you have it. August 7th, 1914. I mean, the war was a week old. Okay, um, Gwarov Batra writes, Is it, hey guys, is it true that the British traded rubber or some such material for sniper optics with the Germans while the war was going on. Maybe a question for Out of the Trenches. As always, amazing channel. Thank you. Um, read Adam Hochschild's uh, A Story of Loyalty and Rebellion. It's, there's more to the title than that, but I'm sure if you look it up, A Story of Loyalty and Rebellion. To get more about this, the British had a serious shortage of binoculars, and you can guess how important binoculars were on the battlefield. So, they turned to Germany, the world leader in precision optics. The German war office immediately supplied as many as 10,000 pairs of binoculars to the British intended for military use and would continue to supply thousands more. The Germans needed rubber for their war effort, and it was in turn supplied by the British through the Swiss border. Because um, the Germans, of course, had no way to get rubber from the faraway places where it grew. And Britain, of course, had no problem with that. That is one of the strange but true stories of the First World War. Federico Balboni writes, Has any nation ever tried to bombard enemy cities with gas? I'm especially thinking about Zeppelins that can bring several canisters with them. That I can't say 100%, but I cannot imagine that a nation would gas enemy civilians en masse and not soldiers. I think that concept might have been too grotesque for all of the warring nations. And think, that would have been a huge propaganda windfall for the enemy, who would most likely suddenly have half a million new volunteers. I mean, imagine if, you know, the Germans had gassed London or, or, or the French had gassed some Germans. It would, that, that would, yeah, no. Uh, if I'm wrong, somebody please enlighten me, but uh, I, I, I don't think I'm wrong. A while ago, we actually did a whole special about gas warfare, and you can click right here to see that. And while I've got your attention, you should definitely go over to War History Online, which is a really cool place to go, and it's a, a great source for war and history, and it's online. Don't forget to subscribe. See you next time.